table in the air from underneath at both sides. Fitchlings were puny, winged, deformed creatures with the body of a tailless weasel. Not a hair could be seen on any of their skinny little bodies. Their arms, wings and legs were paper thin and they had only one muscle in each of their limbs, while three muscles were straining in their torso. They had two muscles in each wing, which they were working rapidly. None of them could speak intelligibly. They were all making brief wails, moans and groans. Five fitchlings were each holding a candle at least ten feet above the table, dimly illuminating the room. The dripping candle wax was making one fitchling very nervous as it melted. The first drop only just missed its shoulder. The fitchling's eyes were almost popping out of its head, clearly worried as the next drop was about to fall directly above it. The drop of molten wax landed on the fitchling's bald head. The fitchling jumped away from the candle in pain and shock, peddling its legs in the air as its wings pulled it higher. The creature screamed, Yahoo! <laughs> as tears leaked down its face while its lipless mouth quivered. The candle fell and bounced off the table as the flame extinguished. The four remaining fitchlings were getting worried now as their eyes peeked from their skulls. Normandus shot up past the dining table. His wings yielded to gravity. The four sunk him onto a wing rest conveniently. Wing rests were special structures made to hold an angel's wings in comfort, to restore health and to relieve stress from an angel. This wing rest was of stone, its condition forsaken, its tarnished state was rich with blemishes and pocket-sized holes. Its structure was similar to a tablet but it had a carved seat in the middle of two armrests which looked like two miniature pillars. The wing rest had a wing-shaped hole at each, at each side. Normandus' wings carefully slotted into the wing-shaped holes of the wing rest, which then started supporting the bones and muscles of his wings. He placed his hands on the armrests. The wing rest horizontalized. Normandus was now prone, his feet clinging to stone and his hands holding on to the armrests. Six fitchlings appeared from behind the wing rest with wide cheeky grins on their little faces as they chuckled to themselves. They planted themselves separately onto a spot of Normandus's wings. Three of them on each side began stroking the wings gently. They next charged an electrical beam from their index fingers and started jolting the wings. The fitchlings continued to shoot small strokes of electricity at the wings, making sure a new area was targeted every time they struck. Normandus could feel tingles of pain and it seemed to relax him and his wings. Another table, vertical, was facing him, this time supported by gravitational magic. Three throne-like chairs were static in the air, separately supported by six fitchlings who were holding on to the armrests, trying their hardest to hold the chairs up in line with Normandus and the table. The table measured eight feet in length and there were a good three feet in between Normandus and the table and another three feet in between the chairs and the table. Trance and her two assistants were closing in on the ruins of Meltem. The cocoon-shaped city floated idly in the darkest atmosphere of the three steps. Night had fallen, the white clouds had turned black, and the sky looked miserable. Winds were soaring and lightning strikes could be heard every now and then, shooting down from a distance with a bright warning firstly. Trance flew in through one of the many craters in the sphere and as soon as the three angels entered the ruins of the city they instantly changed their course of direction. They all shot, up, they all shot upwards with Trance in the lead. 
She could see Normandus ahead lying patiently in the wing rest. She prepared herself for the worst before she even got close to him. When the three angels had arrived, the, fi the Fitchlings fled hurriedly as Trance and her followers' wings lowered them gently in into the chairs, which they were now holding in the air due to their own manipulation of gravity. Normandus was facing them, while Trance was looking up at him as her two followers sat vigilantly behind her. Osgoff, leave us, said Normandus, without breaking his focus from the three. Osgoff looked at his master uncertainly. Are, are you sure? said Osgoff. Yes, now go, said Normandus. Osgoth did not question his master a moment longer. He flapped his wings and left. I believe you have quite a story to tell me, said Normandus. Trance looked puzzled for a moment as she cocked her head to the right. I'm sorry, said Trance. 